Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. So the stories that made it to the front pages of the papers this morning. And let's start with the Vanguard. So the Vanguard um, rides with federal government opts for duty-free imports of rice, beans, wheat, other grains. And the writers here says it will impact on inflation. That is being said by Nasima. A step in the right direction, that is being said by CPPE, and pharma addiction aid boss reacts. Well, like we said, how long is it going to be for? I hope this is just not a stopgap measures. Um, so by the time we pay maybe just a few bucks for this rice and beans and other grains, by next year, we will just be paying even more. Because if we're saying we're going to curb inflation now with this, when that is being taken off, inflation goes back up. What I see is there are people who will stockpile this. They will yes. buy in bulk and just store and wait for that time that uh, the import duties will return and begin to sell. sell it then. That's what will happen. So there will be no possibility of that rice ever coming down to as low as 40,000 naira mm -hmm. because there are people ready now, now that they've heard it, that will buy these things. Uh, trust me, they will buy it so much so that the common man will not uh, have it and then by December or January, then they will, mm. they will begin to sell. Even on the punch, the punch leads with federal government suspends food imports duty, partners states on farming. The writers here says government launches five month duty free import window for maize, rice, wheat, others, and federal government to partner with governors and military to cultivate arable lands, um, support small holder farmers. Well, is even five months. Mm, yeah, well, <laughs> oh, they say 180 days. Let's just mm. assume that this is six months. Mm. Okay, so I think we are joined with Chris Kende Wander um, uh, to just review the papers. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK. He's joining us from Lagos. Good morning, Chris. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Chris. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. Uh, I think we're having some uh, network issues. I'm actually doing All right. You Thank you for joining us. Okay, so we're talking about, um, you, uh, you know, the suspension on food import duties. Me? Hello, can you hear us? Hello, Chris? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Okay. I can hear you. I say we're having some network issues. Um, good morning. Joining you from Patakot. I think your audio is a little bit low, but if you can hear me, let's just go straight into the papers. So it says federal government suspend food imports duties, partner states on farming, government launches five month duty free import window for maize, rice, wheat, others, federal government to partner with governors, military to cultivate arable land, support smallholder farmers. What do you think about this? Because Yamgula and I were just discussing that. Five months is just a short time, and it seems like it's, it's a palliative for now, a stopgap measure. What happens after the five months? So we're looking at the end of the year. So by January, we're back to status quo, whereby we have to pay so much money. And if some people are saying it's going to curb inflation, it's going to curb infl inflation for now. But what happens after the window? Yeah, good morning once again. Are you hearing me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you now. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, I say um, we are, it seems we are having some little challenges. Yeah. I'm joining you actually not from Vegas, but from, from Water Courts. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Um, so, yes, um, the issue, I personally feel that uh, this uh, the measures being taken by government now is overdue. Uh, by now, I believe that uh, we should have opened up the borders to allow uh, food items to come in since we cannot be able to produce enough to feed um, the population. Um, the issue of inflation and no inflation for me is neither here nor there. And we don't have any, what is inflation trend now? And in what we have impacted on the lives of Nigerians. So, um, in as much as this is a, a short term measure, I think that a long term measure should be uh, looked into by the federal government. We need to start importing food. Even countries, countries that are true are far, far better than us. And I'm talking of a country like Ukraine, which is even giving us um, um, grains and uh, food. Despite the fact that they are in war, um, I still don't know why we cannot be able to feed ourselves. A population of over 220 million people with so uh, a vast area of land, lush lands, 
and richly blessed by uh, um, the go by God, we still find it difficult to be able to debate enough food to feed ourselves and even export. It's a big shame to our government, both the present and the past, um, that Nigeria are not grappling with issues. Yes, there have been issues of challenges of um, insecurity, uh, there have been issues of flooding, but these are just uh, uh, very few excuses that anyone can give because in most part of the country we don't have this level this type of insecurity uh, that people are talking about so except we go into full um, mechanized farming and making sure that we're able to feed our populace that we continue to run into this i'm totally for this it's not just removal of taxes on it for just about five months mm. we should open all the floodgates and um, import as much as possible at least for the next one year then by then we would have um, we would have had enough uh, in terms of production. Then we can shut down our borders and um, try to feed up. But for now, an angry man is a hungry man. There's practically not even the dairy that we produce here. You can see the, the high cost of dairy as it were. Pepper, tomatoes, onions, those are just the basics. Tuckless of rice and other basics. If you buy a film at, at some places, go for as much as about 5,000, 6,000 naira now. Yeah. How many Nigerians can have for this? Oh, well, talking about um, excuses and floodgate, opening of floodgate, it's like nature opened its own floodgate and, and NNPCL is using it as an excuse. Yeah. Uh, there's this headline saying scarcity. NNPCL blames logistics, flooding as petrol queues grow longer. Your take, please. Is it not is it not the same as NMPs that told that they have more than enough in reserve? Mm. Have you forgotten what they said? And that is when they it should, when they should start with I always say I use the local fairness, Oriro, Loriro. NMPs will always have excuses for his uh, lapses here and there. If we are having it's talking of logistics, talking if you are talking about logistics, you are talking about probably the uh, the shift with the um, petrol products. Um, they have battered that uh, they have not been lifted from the ships um, to the various depots. And um, then you, you, when you're talking of um, uh, flooding, when did this flooding start, start in Nigeria? And where and where was flooded? Lagos was flooded, and within 24 hours, that's, that's, that water receded. Where, which other places were flooded? Lokoja or where? Let us stop giving us this excuse. We've said that my time again that energy is the problem. I've said it that. The corruption in the, in the NMPC is more than what we are talking about. Every time we say, oh, this is the most corrupt institution in Nigeria, I say, no, it's not. As far as I'm concerned, the most corrupt institution in Nigeria is the NMPC. And the same thing we continue to side, put our satellite on organizations like NMPC and make sure that most of those that are sabotaging our efforts in the oil and gas sector are brought to book. They will not get anywhere. Ask yourself, the trillions and trillions of naira that we put it for, and were projected for and were released for the turnaround of all the refineries in Nigeria. We had the day good. None of those refineries can be able to produce a single liter of petrol. Now they've shift base. Um, they, they know that with the Dangote uh, refinery coming to stream, most of the corrupt tendencies that they they they, they do, and the, most of the money that uh, the Niger, Nigeria money that they steal by imposing importation, making sure that our refinery don't work. Uh, so that they continue to import um, a petroleum product and make humongous money from it. They want to let, let that uh, frustration to uh, Dangote refineries also, so that they won't be able to produce enough for Nigeria, so that this importation will... So, but I, I, I blame, I purposely and will continue to blame the Minister of Petroleum for all the problems bedeviling the, uh, the, the oil sector now. And who am I talking about? I'm talking of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Previous um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the is the minister of petroleum. So if anything wrong goes on within that sector, then we have to hold him responsible because he's the minister of petroleum and not the minister of uh, state. He's just a figurehead in that sector. So if they're having any challenges, if you're having logistics problem, if we are not having problem of supply, if we're having uh, just as they've added flooding to the mist now. And that is the reason why we cannot be together. In, Patak, in, in Abuja, we are hearing that a liter of petroleum is as high as 1,000 naira. When, when they start with this, the next thing you hear, they will indirectly increase the price of petroleum product. Mm. Well, let's move over to The Guardian. So The Guardian leads with 2023 budget performance outlook. 
Unfunded deficit hit 1 trillion naira in nine months, worsening federal government's fiscal position. Now, there's some data here. Well, we have a little some growth, well, with our revenue, but then our debt service has also increased, the recurrent expenditure has increased, and there's a decline when it comes to the, the capital expenditure and fiscal deficit. What do you think about this data? If our um, unfunded deficit is hitting 1 trillion naira in just nine months, and our fiscal, our fiscal position is just not great at the moment. Well, that is not surprising to me, but my problem is the when we issue data in Nigeria, I hardly believe um, most of the data um, that we brand it in Nigeria, unlike what happens in other parts of the world. So most of them that are not, when you see this data, you see, you're talking about one trillion in nine months. For me, it will be more than that. And that is how uh, it will rule. Don't forget our level of borrowing. If you see our proof by debt portfolio in the last one year, uh, compared to where it started going so bad during the time of Mad Mad Buhari, and when the president was coming, he said that there will be no borrowing. Even if there's going to be, there's going to be minimal. But when you compare to what has been borrowed in the last one year, uh, you'll be shocked. And the question you ask yourself: What are these borrowing? What do we use this money that we borrowed? What do we use them for? What do evidence? What do we have to show for them? Now we hear that we are going to use it for capital budget, but we see neither here nor there. So, uh, <laughs> so this this is going to have a, a very strong impact, um, especially on the budget. And you know that we now borrow to fund our own budget. We borrow from other countries to fund our budget. That is how bad the situation is. I don't have any problem with borrowing, but the fact that if you borrow, other countries borrow to uh, for um, for certain basic basic things, especially in the area of uh, capital projects. But ours, we borrow to serve just our personal needs, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, pay salaries of um, government officials, goes, goes going on internal lifestyle. And that, so I hope and believe that um, if we be able to make sure that um, just um, be able to lock the uh, uh, lock the areas where we have seen a lot of um, what do you call it now? Where we are seeing a, a lot of loopholes, and we're able to tighten um, uh, our de deficits as it were. Then also the cost of governance, the governance as we say. So those are wastages. If we're able to do, that, we, are, we are not able to pay. We are still discussing over a year how to pay salaries of um, Niger, increased salaries. From uh, thirty thousand to sixty two thousand or whatever they have. but we still don't make us buy H um, buy SUVs for one hundred and fifty million, one hundred and sixty million for the roads that they say that are bad. But that is how we roll. So for me, um, the government knows what to do. If we have a political way to do it, then we will get the desired result. But as it is now, I have no confidence in what is going on. Okay, since we're talking about borrowing, let's wrap it up with this question. I hope that you can be fast enough because we're running out of, we've run out of time. It's about this borrowing and the agreement, which is the Samoa Agreement. That story is on the Punch newspaper. Human rights, uh, democracy, economic growth, uh, key issues in Samoa Agreement. The people are outraged. Clerics uh, in religious bodies and uh, uh, other people are enraged that this agreement was signed because there are clauses that uh, could encourage things that go uh, against our morals and our, our values as a country. But the federal government is saying this. So it's sounding like someone who said he didn't steal a good, he just stole the rope and then the good <laughs> followed. It seems that's what is happening here. What's your take on the Samoa agreement signing uh, by the federal government and what, whatever the government is saying? Well, um, the government have, to, uh, have come out to um, deny the aspect of the LGBT uh, angle to it, uh, which uh, uh, was, don't forget that that story was initially published by the Daily Trust newspaper. Mm -hmm. And um, the government has threatened to to Daily Trust for some of the publication. And I've seen an, a, a rejoinder by Daily Trust, and it's joined yesterday by Daily Trust. We are there invariably, uh, indirectly apologize for some of the uh, um, story angle as it were. So it has, it has it, uh, this with LGBT, and um, they are saying that um, if the government have come out to say, or oh, no, there's something like that, then they themselves 
um, agree with government that, that they have very responsible um, uh, newspaper publication. So I want to believe what the government has said. Let me give them the benefit of the doubt and accept something else comes up and that will make me um, not to believe what they've said. But coming to that, and I said, in, just uh, like I said, as a, as a like lawyer, that, as a lawyer, it's not bullying or uh, it's not. As a lawyer now, I'm just trying to pick your mind so that uh, we wrap up with this. As a lawyer now, when you talk about human rights, uh, will, can this not be exploited to uh, be a gain for the LGBTQ community? Because uh, human rights is very, very wide until it is defined, defined specifically. Don't you think it can be exploited? And if it can, that means uh, we're in for it. it. No, nothing can be exploited. We have passed a law. And it is a law in Nigeria, except that law is repealed. There is nothing about LGBT. Nobody can do anything about LGBT in Nigeria. So okay. the law is there, except that law. So whether you sign anything, you go and sign anywhere, just to be able to get anything. That, that, that you cannot do something or nothing. So what I'm saying is that we have a law which prohibits LGBT. So any agreement you sign, anything you sign, anything you sign, that is in contradiction to that law is null and void, and that is the proposition of the law. So okay. you can sign whatever you want to sign, but it does not mean that that because except that law is repealed, and that is the uh, that is the law as it were. Okay. All right. Well, I understand that that's the law in Nigeria, mm -hmm. so it has to take, um, it has to supersede any other agreement that is being signed by the federal government. Well, this is where we have to wrap it up it on this segment <laughs> here right now. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us and reviewing the papers with us. Always a pleasure. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.